Welcome to my Druk Deep Dive. That's right, we're diving headfirst into the depths of Druk's discography. And hopefully I'm saying the name right, because I can never pronounce anything. They happen to be my favourite black metal band of all time. Of all time? That's correct. They're a Ukrainian band, atmospheric black, with nature themes. A lot of nature, a lot of traditional folky kind of instruments, and also... They have some passages from movies here and here and now in some of the songs as well, just quite cool. And a lot of the lyrics are by Ukrainian poets. So, you know, glory to Ukraine. I love this band pieces. I'm going to go through every single album, the EP splits chronologically, and tell you my thoughts on each. So, let's start at the very beginning. 2003's Forgotten Legends. This is by Supernal Music. It has three songs only. It's crazy. Whenever I listen to this album, I don't I forget that there's only three songs on here. There is a little interlude at the end as well. But only three main songs, which is uh pretty insane, but they are long. They are lengthy songs, you know? They are lengthy songs. This is a bit more stripped back for them. It's a lot more um atmospheric. It's probably one of the most atmospheric albums aside from the next one that we'll get to. A lot of repeating passages, a lot of kind of I don't want to say trance, because it makes you sound like dance, but kind of puts you in a trance with the repeating nature of the songs. Some people may say it's boring. I don't. I love it. I love how it kind of just envelops you in the nature and the sound of the album, and just, when if it's a good thing, keep it going. That's what I say. Just, just keep it going. And they keep it going, and I love it for that. It's a very dark album, and uh, the song Faults Dawn has such a great riff on. This is one of my favourite Druk albums. I do think it's a great place to start. Um, it doesn't have as much variety as some of the other albums, but I feel like that's a good thing, because I just feel like it flows so smoothly and so well, you're just kind of like, the album's over already? How the hell? How the hell? But I love it for that. So yeah, Forgotten Legends uh, in 2003, I think it's one of the best black metal albums of all time, and it only gets better from here. How do they do do it. Autumn Aurora 2004 on the same record label. This one has um, three songs and three instrumentals. There's a lot of instrumentals on this one, some long ones as well. And I, when I was listening to the album again, I, I noticed it, but whenever I listened before, I never really noticed it. It just kind of flows so well. This is probably the most nature heavy album you can get. If you wanted an album by Druk to take you into the forest, this is that album. This is the one where you're at a lake with the trees, it's autumn time, and it's almost autumn now, autumn time, and it just makes you feel at one with nature, this is the album for that, this is the album for that, with the kind of like nature sounds in the songs as well, the instrumentals kind of add to the atmosphere of the music, so good, screaming, top notch, atmosphere, fucking palpable, I love it, yeah, there's a lot more of a nature feel in this one, and this is the first time they use synths, Synth work in the um, the songs, and I think it just works so well. Just works fantastically well. So yeah, Autumn Aurora is a fan favorite. Some people say this is the best. I can I can't argue with you, but my favorite is yet to come. Swan Road. Now this has one instrumental and about six songs, so a lot more songs, a bit shorter than they are on um, Forgotten Legends. They pack a punch. This feels more heavier. This is like a heavier version of Forgotten Legends and Autumn Aurora. Way heavier than Autumn Aurora. Um, some blast beats in here as well. Yeah, definitely a heavier album and really fun one. One that I wasn't too big into when I first started, but it's grown and grown and grown on me. And I love every single song on here. Oh boy, this is a bloody grower of an album. All the lyrics are based of the work of the Heidemachers, which is narrating about the anti-Polish uprising. Um, what year was it? 1768, I wrote it down, 1768. So it's kind of concept kind of concepty, you could say, about that, which is probably why it feels more, um, not epic, what's the word, like, intense? It has more of an intense album, because it is about an uprising, it's not nature-filled, you know, it's nothing like that, it is more about fighting back against the oppressors. Love it. Love the themes, love the songs. This album punches you, punches you hard. Less atmospheric, but it's fine. Uh, the last song is is quite atmospheric, but yeah, the rest of it, full force, great stuff. Nice little palate cleanser for what's been happening and what's to come. So let's move on. Blood in our well. I just realised I have all these on CD and I've not been showing them. What 
A Muppet. Ah oh, well, <laughs> we got the green screen anyway. Blood and the Wells. You'll know what I think about this. It's my favourite album of all time. My favourite black metal album of all time. It's a bloody masterpiece. It takes everything from Forgotten Legends, Autumn and Raw Earth, Swan Road, and mixes it into this beautiful cacophony of magic. And oh boy. From the little inserts from the movies to just the the sweeping melodies that envelop you. The nature themes, like an autumn, the repeating passages, like on Forgotten Legends, the solos in here as well. Yeah, this has it all. It's amazing. It's fantastic. I love it. I love it. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10! Again, poetry is used for the lyrics in this one. But yeah, the, the added addition of like solos and movie samples just adds to the atmosphere and makes it the most epic album they've done and will do. This is my favourite Duke album. I think it's flawless and I think it's a, it's a must have for any black metal fan. Next up, 2006, same year, Gr Songs of Grief and Solitude. This one is the only one in the category I'm not big into. If they didn't have this album, I'd be totally fine. It is an all instrumental album. You know how I feel about that. I, I do like my instrumentals, but I like it mixed in with the black metal. With this, it's all instrumental, traditional folk music the entire way through. And they even repeat some passages from songs prior so to me, it feels a bit of a waste, but if you kind of take it take it aside, um, if, maybe if you haven't listened to any of the other albums, this would be a cool, nice little folky album. If you didn't want Black Metal Screams, you could just look, throw this on, have a good time. But, you know, I like my Black Metal Screams, I like my drumming. There's not any drumming on this. It's just very stripped back, very folky, very traditional. And I can appreciate it for people who like it. For me... I like the heaviness mixed in with the beautifulness and the atmosphere. Um, too much of one or the other maybe can uh, is a detriment to the music. I like a good mix, which is why the rest of the albums work really well. This one, for me, doesn't, but hey, still a cool effort, still a cool uh, album. It's just... Ah, every time people say, what's the flawless, most flawless black metal band or band? I really want to say Droop because every other album I love. But then this one, I'm kind of like, ah, I, could, I could skip it. I could skip it. So, yeah. I, um, for fans of that kind of music, you'll have a blast, though. So, Songs of Grief and Solitude. It's here. Next up is the Anti-Urban EP, which had a couple of cool songs on which will make it onto a compilation album called Eastern Frontier and Flames, which we'll get to. But, yeah. There's some cool songs on here, Ashes, really good one. And the Fallen Into Oblivion instrumental, very cool as well. But again, they do make their way onto the Eastern Frontier and Flames. So if you're going to pick up anything, pick up that. And then there's an even better compilation later on, which we'll get to. Um, so yeah, I'd say wait for the compilations. Next up, Estrangement 2007. This is one of the underrated ones. I actually think this is stands up there with Autumn Aurora and Forgotten Legends. I do. Like, I actually do. Um, no one talks about Estrangement. I do think it's probably one of those underrated albums in the entire catalogue. And there'll be another one I'll mention as well. But yeah, it has the nature themes. A bit more rock mixed in with the black metal, but it's still good. Catchy as old fuck. It's kind of back to basics, like the debut. Three long songs and an instrumental. Love it. Um, again, it feels a lot different to Blood and Wells um, and The Swan Roads. It is going back to the early stuff, so... You know what? I think this is phenomenal. Solitary Endless Path is an amazing opener. I don't care what anyone says. Blast Beats Return, like from a Swan Road as well. And it has so many solos. So many solos and so many hypnotizing melodies that this album is underrated and worth your time. Go re-listen to it. Estrangement. The album cover is very similar to Autumn Aurora. A lot of people pass it off. But no, go re-listen to Estrangement. I think it's bloody flawless and well worth your time. Next up is Microcosmos 2009, Season of Mist, this one. Season of Mist Activists. Ah, uh, this one. I I remember listening to it ages ago, and I was like, oh yeah, about the cosmos, it's going to be spacey, and I always said it had like a space vibe. Re-listening to it, it doesn't. Don't know what I was talking about. It, the, the title persuaded me. This is a very somber, this is a very depressing album. The first half, anyway. The first half of this album is very somber. I do like my doom, I do like my gloom. And I think it just, it's very melancholic, the first half. 
second half goes crazy. So it's like a tale of two halves with Microcosmos because the second half solos up the wazoo and just insanity, and especially the last song. Holy moly. But yeah, the first part, I was like, this is really depressing. <laughs> but I like it. I like that kind of music. Do you like my doom? I mean, I'm wearing a hooded minute. I do like my doom as well as black metal. But yeah, um, yeah, a very, very good, very good album. People seem to like this one a lot as well. I do. I think it is one of the better Druk albums. Um, and I like that there's a shift change in it. I like that it keeps it interesting and engaging the whole way through. And of course, the final track, blasting off with solo straight away, right off the gate. Oh my God. And Ars Poetica ramping up the intensity. Yes. Such a great album, such a good one, um, great art as well, and I adore it. Next up, 2010, is Handful of Stars. This is the kind of, people say it's like the shoe gaze, black gaze one. Um, again, this is an underrated one in the whole discography. The melodies here are fantastic. Like, the first song melody, oh boy, like, proper song, not the instrumental. So goddamn good. There's still black metal screams here, um, and anyone who doesn't like Alces, this is can, can, you know, go, go do one. Can go fucking do one. And we just realised, during the period of making this uh, album, they also did a side project with Niche from Alcest, speaking of Alcest, uh, called Old Silver Key, and they had an album out. So it's all the members of Druk and Niche singing, and it's more rocky than this album is. This is a lot more metal, but the melodies are so good, and Niche, Niche is one of the best singers of all time. So, yeah. Love that side project. If you didn't know about it, go check it out. But yeah, Handful of Stars. It's... I wouldn't even call it, like, black gaze. Like, I still think this is atmospheric black. People are just throwing a fit. It is a bit of a lighter sound, but it's very refreshing within the discography, and I'm going to defend the shit out of it. I'd much rather listen to this than Songs of Grief and Solitude or some of the other albums, to be fair. Very unique, very fresh. Very beautiful music on this one. Very beautiful but also catchy, so many catchy riffs, and the screaming is still there. The screaming is still glorious. Don't see the problem with this album. I think it's great. Everyone's just crying over fucking spilt milk. They can put the fucking nappies on and sort their shit out. Sort it out. Handful of stars. I'll rep it. Underrated. Love it. Next up, we have a Slavic Chronicles EP with some covers of, like, Master's Hammer and Sacrilegium. Have I said that right? Yeah, some covers, but again, they will be on the compilation album to come. So, Eastern Frontier of Flames. Next up, 2012, is Eternal Turn of the Wheel, which is... Um, some people say Return to Form after Handful of Stars, but I actually prefer Handful of Stars to this. This one is a very good album. It's true, but they don't do bad albums. But it's kind of more of the same we've been having previous to Handful of Stars. Uh, it doesn't do anything exciting. The songs are all good, don't get me wrong. But it doesn't have an impact on me like some of the other albums. This may be controversial, you know? I still love it, but it would be lower down on the list for me. Still own it. Still love it. If you throw it on, I'd rather listen to it than a lot of the Black Metal albums. I'll tell you that. But nothing jumps out at me. It's all just nice, atmospheric, drunk music. They kind of got into this rhythm now. You know what's going to happen. But still has some banger songs on. It does bring back the heaviness and the melancholy as well. There's a lot of melancholic feels like a microcosmos on this album. I think it's great, but on the lower end for me. Next up is a split with Winter Filith. That's correct, English's own Winter Filith, one of my favourite bands as well. With a split with Druk. Oh my god, it's insane. A Thousand Moons Ago, Slash the Gates. Such a good split. Again, it's covers though, but um, again, these will be on... The Eastern Frontier and Flames, which we'll get to, I'll get to now, fuck it. Eastern Frontier and Flames, a compilation of all the previous mentioned uh, split albums and uh, EPs that they've had. All of them will be on Eastern Frontier. So go give it a listen and give it some time, because it's all fantastic and it's well worth being in your collection. Next up, A Furrow Cut Short, 2015, the longest album. This one is underrated. Um, I was not disappointed, but I was kind of a bit yeah, disinterested with Eternal Turn of the Wheel, but Furrow Cut Short brought me back. And some people overlook this one. I love it. Not only is it the longest, it's one of the catchiest. Curse Sons 1 starts out pretty good, but I feel like after that is when the album just picks up intensity, and every song after that is just 
so catchy, so memorable, so interesting, and I love it. It's just the first song, um, I don't know, it doesn't grab me as much, so I always, sometimes when I listen to it, I was like, eh. But then after that, flawless album, Curse Sons 2, ooh, the melody in there. Fucking great. Fucking great. Yeah, I think this is an underrated album, one everyone should check out, even though, yeah, it's long, but, you know... Who cares? Stuck it, stick it, stick it up your ass. <laughs> Suck it up is what I meant to say. You can stick the long thing up your ass as well if you wanted, but you do you. You do you. Yeah, long album, but fantastic. If you enjoyed all the other Drew albums, you should enjoy this one too. Next up, we had three split albums between 2016 and 2017 with bands such as Grift, Paysage Diver, and Hades Almighty. Fantastic black metal bands in their own right, so these splits. A very interesting, but, but, again, all these songs, fantastic songs, I'll have you know, by Drew, are on the next compilation. A few lines in archaic Ukrainian, which we will get to, because, oh my god, I love that album. Next up, they often see Dreams About the Spring, with that dark album cover, and I'll let you know, this is the first Drew album I actually heard. I know when it came out, I heard it, so that's how long I've been into them, 2018. Um... I saw that and I was like, this is creepy, this is dark, this is going to be good. And it, oh boy, was it. Starting right off the gate, the very first song hooks you right in. If you don't like the first song in here, don't know what to tell you. You need your ears washed out with bleach. Or just cut off. Just cut your ears off. First song grabs you by the balls and holds it until you're a fan. I love this album to pieces. Underrated. I think it's a massive step up from the previous couple. I do. Handful of Stars. Um, a turn, a turn of the wheel, and throw a cut short. Yeah, I like them a lot. This is a massive step up. I love this album. Dark, it's brooding, but it's catchy. The melodies, the solos, everything is just flawless on this album. But again, the opening guitar part, it hooks you right in. Such a great album, and I'm so glad that it got me into this amazing band. Um, next up, we're going to talk about the compilation now. A few lines in archaic Ukrainian. I must listen. Probably one of the best Druk albums they've ever done. And it's a compilation of their EPs and splits. <sighs> but the songs they put on those albums are some of the best they've ever written. Golden Horse, <sighs> Fiery Serpent, Autumn in Sepia, or Sepia. These, these are some of the best Druk songs they've ever done. So if you've never listened to this album, this right here, wherever I fucking put it, you, you're doing yourself a disservice. Go listen to it. It's one of the best. It'll probably be in the top three. Not even going to lie. Top three. It would be like... Um, God, I don't even know my top three email. Blood in Our Wales is number one. Then maybe this album. Then probably... Forgotten Legends. Probably something like that. Or Autumn of Fire. There's too many good albums. Too many good. But this one, give it a listen. Then we come to the final one. All Belongs to the Night, which I have a full review of on the channel. The latest one, 2022. Such... Sorrowful album, very melancholic, very sorrowful, very dark and evil album because of the wars that's been happening in Ukraine at the moment. Surprised they managed to release the album, to be fair, but I'm so glad they did because it's full of bangers. Um, it is a lot darker tone than the often see dreams about the spring, uh, which is to be expected due to the circumstances. Every song's fantastic. Windmills is so good with that kind of chanty melody at the start of it. Ah, oh, it, it's a phenomenal album, a nice follow-up, and they're on another upward trajectory uh, after a few lines. They often see dreams, and then this. Oh, the Drew can do no wrong. The only album in the discography I was kind of iffy on is Songs of Grief and Solitude, because it's just a fully folky instrumental album. Aside from that, the band's flawless. They're my favourite band in black metal. And they always fucking will be. So that's my Druk um, deep dive. Hopefully you enjoyed going through the Druk albums with me. Let me know your favourite songs down below. Golden Horse might be mine. I really enjoyed that song. But yeah, let me know down below your favourite songs. Um, your favourite albums. And what bands you want me to do deep dives for next. Hopefully you've had some fun. And we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.